Hey everybody, this is Chuck. I'm here with my buddy Rupert. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> from uh, reviewing history and the Tell Him Steve Dave stuff that we do together. I'm just letting you know, yes, this is episode 101 of Fun Bearable. And if you're wondering, did I miss the release of 100? Yes. What's going on? <laughs> no. Behind the paywall. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, exactly. No, what we're doing is we're doing a 100 live in a couple weeks. You're oh, I thought the other two guys were done. <laughs> you thought you were replacing them? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we're starting over with 101. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just, to, just to make it nice and even. Yeah. No, so we're doing our live show in a couple weeks, which you'll hear a plug about in a, in, in a few seconds. Uh, and that's going to be episode 100. So last week was episode 99. This week is 101. And eventually episode 100, which will be our live show, will hit the feed and you'll enjoy it then. I like to think, you know, as a replacement, <laughs> I kind of have the attributes of both guys. You do. You and know? if we go down the list, they're both going to be pretty yeah. upset. <laughs> I do like hot dogs. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, the 100th episode of Fun Bearable is nearly upon us. And to celebrate, we've decided to do a live episode taping just with people looking at us mm -hmm. at the Rhode Island Comedy Connection on Sunday, July 21st. Huge thanks to our sponsor, RI Food Fights, a great organization in Rhode Island that always helps us out. We can't thank them enough. As always, we will be breaking the boundaries of what people consider podcasting live on stage. And good taste. And good taste, for sure. And you can grab tickets at funbearablepod.com right now. Please come on out. Let your no friends know. Tell your tell your tell your auntie. Tell your mom. Tell tell everyone in your family to grab tickets. If you're in Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Connecticut, anywhere remotely near the New England area, come on out to the Comedy Connection on Sunday, July 21st for our 100th episode. Uh, we're very thankful for the for the listeners for the past couple years, and we really are going to make sure we celebrate this thing right. We're going to have a lot of fun, and it's going to happen soon. You remember when songs were like, like, like classic rock, right? Yeah. Okay. The stuff like when I was a kid, I would hear on the radio uh, that my parents would listen to and stuff like that. Um, remember when songs, I feel like an old man. Remember when songs <laughs> were like about the most basic, simplest fucking thing in the world? Yes. Like what? Well, we were just goofing about two tickets to paradise. Yeah. It's, it's nothing. It's just like. I want to take you away on a fun vacation. That's yeah. it. I got two tickets to paradise. Pack yeah. your bags. We leave tonight. Like that's that's what that song is. Yeah. Um. Or I I don't know. There's like a million things like you can point to all these like very popular songs. Jesse's girl. Yep. You know what I mean? Like that's a very specific thing. Like like the '80s music. Yeah. Was so because it was new. Right, it was coming from like the seventies had like rock coming through. Mm -hmm. The eighties was when it got like more commercial, mm -hmm. and songs were just like, "I wear a jean jacket, and that's going to be the whole song." Like that's it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I wonder. It's it's funny because you'd have to think about. I guess we'd have to like look at different songs from different time periods because. Yeah. I wonder. I don't know. That's that's a really interesting thing. A lot of eighties music is like that to me. Like, I, I, like come on, Eileen. I kind of think that the nature of artist about like big creation, like movies and stuff like that. The Bible. It's like you start, and when you have uh, podcasts, movies, songs, whatever. <laughs> yeah. You probably start with simpler ideas. Yeah. And then oh, as sure. time goes on, the way to make your ideas different is to add variables and to add twists and turns. Yeah. So it does make sense. But it's that. ironic, though, that I because I feel like the 60s moving into the 70s had a, a, a very distinct growth period of that stuff, right? Mm. I think the Beatles kind of sums it up. The Beatles can start with, I want to hold your hand. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the song. Yeah. I, I saw a girl, now I want to hold her hand. Yeah, yeah. right. To the end of their creative process in the seventies, yeah, where it is just like insane, yes. Yes. you know what I mean? Like, who's the walrus? Yeah, can you yeah. imagine the sixties Beatles being like, "I am the walrus"? People, yeah. people, their the blood would shoot out of their their orifices. They wouldn't yeah. know. But then it went like 
backwards again, and I think that's the commercial side of it. I think it's maybe the more mm, corporatization. Yeah. Where suddenly we're in a new realm, and we've got music videos, yeah. and we got to hammer these things. I don't know. That's a good. That's an interesting. That's an interesting take. Yeah, it's weird to go from, say, some of the White Album of the Beatles, right? Mm. Rocky Raccoon, to then later have like Cindy Lauper. Girls just want to have fun. Yeah, where it's like that feels so much more closely connected to "I Want to Hold Your Hand." Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think about. Uh, as I often do, rap. You are a big rap. Oh my God. We came in here to record now, and this is going to date the episode. All Brad has been talking about <laughs> is Kendrick Lamar and Drake yep. and the diss tracks that have been dropped. I haven't listened to them. You know, I don't really know that much about the whole situation. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll explain it all later. Um, oh my God. Brad catching people up on <laughs> the day to day of the rap fucking game yeah, would be yeah. amazing. Oh, yeah. I would pay for that Patreon. I, I, you, you look at rap songs that came out in the 80s. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he wears a don't rag. <laughs> oh, no. I hate it. I hate it. He clearly does not. He clearly wears a Mountain Dew rag. <laughs> Not gonna do my bit. Hello. No, do the bit. Do no, the bit. I, I was gonna talk like the idea <laughs> of like bust a move uh, sure. by Young MC, and Hell those yeah. lyrics are not amazing. Uh, I would beg to the differ. The rhyme structure is. Uh, the, the 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 meter is a little bit forced. Like dressed like, in yellow, come say hello. Just come sit down next to me, you fine fellow. I walk out of there without a moment to lose. Come on, Fatso, bust a move. Did he say that? In one of the lyrics, he says Fatso. (laughs) Is it true? (laughs) Yeah. I would remember. (laughs) Just just compared to some of the the lyrics that are going around now, it just seems like rap has gotten increasingly more complex with with a few uh, outliers that are kind of intentionally, I don't want to say easy, but like intentionally less complex. Sure. Sure. Um, and and so it's it's yeah. similar, you know it's 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 a yeah, sign. I like wave. the the early part of rap where it was just like you know, my name is Ray and I'm here to say you know like <laughs> that, like that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, Family Guy is that great Will Smith rap thing, it's, which is great. Oh, man. Like like your, don't walk in, your mom just cleaned those floors. It's yeah, like yeah, really yeah. funny. Um, I will say one of the reasons Brad doesn't like uh, Bust a Move is because his favorite thing to do is just stand there. Yeah. <laughs> And he he listened to Young MC's uh, uh, "Off to the Principal's Office You Go," yeah. right? What was that one called? Yeah. I think it's called Principal's Office. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but he didn't get it because he's like, yeah. But in the song, it sounds like that's a bad thing. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Is, isn't he go going, going there office. to get an award? <laughs> well, to write down who did wrong. Yeah. He also he loves to know. dime out all of my my peers. He yeah. actually just heard. <laughs> Thank this. you for saying peers instead of friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, he just also he, when he found out the artist's name, he was like, "I am four MCs." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> However, <laughs> this one's too young, too young. If you're going to be a master of ceremonies, <laughs> you simply you need, need some the experience. experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. Hello, uh, and welcome yeah. to another episode of Fun Bearable. I am Brad Rohr. I am Ray. Brad hated the movie Footloose because he said they made the hero the bad guy, yeah, yeah. Harrington. <laughs> and I'm Chuck. Uh, Chuck what? I was going to say, Wait, what's the last name? it is funny to what's think about people Staten, listening you. to our podcast and like having to tell someone else about it. And they're like, so what was that episode like? It's like, first five minutes, two of the guys were making fun of the third guy but only with puns about the song Bust a Move from yeah, yeah. Young MC. They're like, what? The wall, like, Why? I was, like I was Poindexter. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Anyway, what are we doing today, Brad? We are going to read some emails. We don't have a clever name are for that phenomenon. Are these emails for like just in general, like any kind of email that's like maybe someone has just sent to another random person? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. It's are just these emails it, from your life? We, we intercepted emails uh, going from person to person are from we, the history of the internet. Are we finally doing the thing where we read your complaint emails <laughs> oh to companies? Gosh. That would be... <laughs> That we, uh, that'd be a multi-part episode. This is uh, this is emails. The music that... in Target was too loud <laughs> <laughs> and too offensive. Um, it was Vanessa Carlton, and I'm just uh, she would 
<laughs> and I apologize for my laugh sounding like I am a seven pack a day smoker, mm. uh, but my sinuses have completely sealed up. Mm. This room is a torture chamber for my allergies. I don't know why. Uh, it does feel like we've created a situation doing this podcast where I agree to come in here and give you, the two of you, part of my life force each time we come in here. <laughs> like we're Shao Kahn? Yeah. Like I am now... Your soul is mine. Right, right. Like less of yeah. like like a like a vampire, energy vampire kind of situation, mm-hmm. which is really troublesome for me. And yes. uh, and I just I say it so you don't judge me as this is how I normally sound. I right. promise it's not. And also so you understand as a viewer listener, like, you know, what I'm willing to do for yeah. You. Yeah. yeah. Also, also, like the difference in Ray's life force between episode one and whatever episode number this happens to be. Right. Yeah. Ninety seven, I'm gonna guess. Yeah. I'm going to say frayed edges is okay. a good mm. d- description. Yeah. Um, people sent emails to funbearablepod at gmail.com. Oh, it's for thi- okay, yeah. All right. And so we have like a sack of emails. Yes. And so what we're going to. What do we do with the. We have to figure out a way to open it. We're going to read. Does it have a. Like a we're like just going to read rope emails? at the top of it's it? It's one of those things. It's not a, a real thing. We've got to do it ourselves. Oh, it's so we're going to bust open the thing. We yeah. Gotta bust a move on it. Yeah. Yes. Don't, don't just stand there. I guess what you could say. Uh, for lack of a better term don't do it craig is we're about to <clears throat> crack that sack <clears throat> uh balloons balloons floating up balloons floating up i'm Stabs. running out of things Stabs. blood is pouring out of his head Stabs. bloody Stabs. balloons Stabs. bloody Stabs. balloons Stabs. it's spurting and squirting out of his face guys we're in 2024 his teeth are falling basically out. anything with brad <laughs> spurting or squirting oh his earwax oh wait it's gone he has earwax cleaned recently it's all cleaned. January. Sperm fly like a fountain through sperm, the air. Sperm, 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 sperm. Mouth, mouth, like mouth, the, mouth, mouth, Like mouth, the Bellagio mouth. Sort, fountains. Sort the sperm. Sperm, sperm, sperm. Sperm. Sort it, sort it, sort it. All the sperms have, have little glasses on their foreheads. Sperm, sperm. I, 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 red sperm, red sperm, red sperm. You're, you're like, oh my gosh, it's so funny when people have to explain this podcast to someone else. <laughs> and then you do this. <laughs> what I think is fun is like, there's no way 99% of what we just said will actually appear on screen. <laughs> So it's us, it's just the two of us. I hope someone's watching it, and then someone else walks into the room, and it's just us going, Brad sperm, Brad sperm everywhere. There's little glasses on the sperm, and he's snorting the sperm. Hey, please, someone make an out of context fun variable channel where it's just just that. it's just it's like a, a level from Cuphead, and it's it's Brad's head, and like. Sperm spewing out of his ears like steam when he's mad. <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, why is he so excited? Uh, yeah. They're going to read listener mail. <laughs> <laughs> the intro graphic is the whole episode. And by the end, we're like, oh, we couldn't get to him. That's funny. <laughs> chickens, chickens, yeah. chickens, chickens. That's the chickens, April Fool's chickens, joke chickens. episode of this. Watermelon uh, explode. Watermelon explode. <laughs> Uh, semen in the watermelon. <laughs> semen. <laughs> Gallagher's penis. Gal- did you say Gallagher's penis? <laughs> I did. <laughs> that's, that, that's also. Oh no, Gallagher's penis is walking out of Mark Maron's podcast. <laughs> I'll say Gallagher's penis is also like when Chuck sees something that's unbelievable, he's like, great Gallagher's penis. <laughs> That's not a bad phrase. You should write down Gallagher's penis as a possible improv troop name. You know, let me send it, let bad. me send it to my summer coach and see what she has. <laughs> okay. Who's summer coach? Is she a nice person? She is. She is. She's great. Uh, this email is from 2024. We are caught up to the current year. That's wow. pretty good. We're getting there. Yeah. It is from uh, Ball Long- Drop. It's Brad's ball. It's full of steam. <laughs> <laughs> it is from longtime fun bear, Mr. Mystic. Ah. Sperm whale. But not the real one. <laughs> Hello, friends. Hello. Quick, quick Mr. question. Mr. What movie has the most delicious looking pizza, but you can't say TMNT2? Yeah, wow. I know, I know. But if that's what you really want to choose, I don't give a turtle's tail. My favorite movie pizza would have to be E.T. or that Sloppy Za from All Dogs Go to Heaven. <laughs> sloppy Za. Amazingly um, yours, Mr. Yeah. Mystic. That's a that's a hard question. It's I'm I'm struggling to really think of the pizzas. Two have popped into my head. T- Turtles two is so iconic. Uh, yeah, pizza. yeah, that's yeah. great. 
Uh, I'm not. I'm going to be honest. I was going to say this, but now I'm just going to be honest about it. I don't remember it perfectly, but the Home Alone two pizza looks pretty. I good. I was going to say the Home Alone two pizza as well, not the Home Alone one pizza that they're all eating. The Home no. Alone two in the limo pizza yes, that yes. looked pretty phenomenal. The one, the other one that popped into my head, but I don't think looks very <laughs> good, is Back to the Future two, the Domino's. rehydrated pizza. Oh, the Domino's pizza, it's Pizza Hut. Interesting. It's, it's pizza, pizza Hut, yeah. is in Back to the Future too. Interesting detail: the Pizza Hut people were on set, and they every time they reshot the scene, they made a new pizza. Yeah, and they yeah. insisted on making a new pizza yeah. every time, which is hilarious. To oh me. yeah, it's a brand thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a really hard question. And I'm str- uh, man, like I said, I'm struggling to think of other. It's weird because movie uh, pizzas. A, a pizza I'm thinking about not from a movie. It's from an SNL digital short. When Andy Samberg was punching people in the face right before they ate something, and Will Forte had a big slice of New York pizza, like a yeah. big floppy oh, slice, and got punched, and then whatever. Uh, and so that came to mind as, hmm. you know, appetizing looking pizza, especially because Will Forte didn't get to eat it because he got punched in the face. Sure. I mean, we're, we're going cartoons, too, because he said all dogs go to heaven. And in Goofy Movie, they have a pretty great looking pizza. Yeah. Damn. It's tough. What, what about I, the, I, the TMNT <clears throat> pizza with the, uh, the sausage aliens on it from the cartoon? Too many aliens. Here's the problem. I think cartoon <laughs> it's the pizza. The first time you've ever said that. Cartoon pizza, it gives you an emotional feeling of pizza. Yes. That's accurate. It never is accurate to what pizza is. It's always like the stretchiest, yeah. cheesiest, yeah. gooeyest yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Where if that were reality, you'd be like, "This pizza sucks." Yeah. Oh yeah, like it's it's, it's unwieldy. You yeah. know what I mean? It's tough. Yeah, all yeah, the I toppings agree. are sliding right off that pie. I agree. Yeah, I'm struggling to think of other pizza. And that's an unfortunate thing. And I feel like there should be... Is there maybe perhaps a IMDP? Internet? No, no. Internet Movie Data Pizza. I think it should be... Pizza Base. IMPB. It should be IMPBDB. IMPDB. IMPDB. Inter- Internet Movie Pizza Database. Yeah. All right. And it's also a droid. Unsurprisingly, the, the, the hero of the day... TVGuide.com. Okay. 50 classic pizza scenes in movies. Oh, uh, God. Oh, Settle God. in. We're reading one email. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, Wayne's World. Wayne, Wayne's World. Oh, he had yeah. the Pizza Hut. And then Pizza the Hut. Pizza the Hut from Spaceballs. That's a good pizza. Uh, can I be honest with you? Uh, looking at Pizza Hut, uh, Pizza the Hut, I'd take a bite out of that bastard. Me too. Yeah. I would absolutely take a yeah, bite out of exactly, that bastard. Exactly. Exactly. But you know what I would say? I need crust in this. Mm, you know? I know. It's all topping. Is there anything better than that? Uh, there's a certain kind of pizza experience that little leftover nubbin in the middle of the box when Uh, everybody's had their pizza mm -hmm. and it's just the tips the cheese tips it's just the tips with like maybe one little mushroom or pepperoni on there and that is i'm calling it just the tips because it's just that little bit of the tip of the pie that didn't come off oh my Uh, god i love i love the leftover pizza cheese i i will say fast times at ridgemont high pizza Uh, delivered to class yeah i don't really remember it i will say like out of all the and it's this might be just like my own upbringing out of all the pizza chains, Domino's, all that stuff. Yeah, I'm not really big into pizza chains. I think Papa Gino's is pretty great. Papa Gino's pizza is actually really good, and one of my favorites is Pizzeria Regina in Boston. Mm. It's so good. Yeah, and that looks like the move. It looks like the Turtles pizza. Yeah, it looks like that. Uh, I really, of course, you know, Slab in Portland is going to always be my favorite pizza. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had uh, one downside of being in. Uh, Ireland and London pizza is not a, you know what I mean yeah and it's also very EU based European uh, European Union so they pull from the Italian pizza mm. okay which is different um, yeah. and you know then American pizza right and like their big chain is Pizza Express in England mm-hmm. so when we were in London Finn really wanted pizza for dinner one night so we had Pizza Express it's fine yeah, yeah. But it's not the greatest. I will say there are two pizzaiolis, which are pizza experts certified Mm -hmm. in Italy. There are two pizzaiolis in the United States of America. One of them, their pizza shop is on uh, Main Street in Warren, Rhode Island. Yeah. And it's so... I love it. Brad doesn't love it. A little fancy. It's a little fancy Mm -hmm. for Brad. But their margarita pizza is outrageous. Yeah, this question is very hard to answer yeah. because I'm struggling to remember pizzas. Sal's Pizza and Do the Right Thing would be uh, would be another I, one. I can't so remember far. accurately remember these no, pizzas no. though. You know? I'm out. I'm out. Right. I'm, I'm checking out. I think I I, I got to go <laughs> Turtles too. I know it was a it was a you know it was yeah. banned, but Turtles too. It's a great question. I know I'm going tough. Home Alone too. Pizza. Yeah. That that was my that was my second choice. Yeah. Um, Thank n- you, Mr. Mystic. Yes. 
Oh boy. Uh, <clears throat> Nope. Oh, a lot of stalling. This is uh, well. This is uh, it's it's more than I thought. Um, there's there's a, an attached short story here. Oh, that yeah. Um, we can we yeah. Um, That's but, a lot. Yeah. Let's go back. That's to our it. buddy Neil Dog. Yeah. Thank you, Neil Dog. We'll go back to it someday. Um. All right. This is a good lengthy meaty email. Ew. Hey guys, it's from, it's from Jack. Hey guys, Hi, lo- Jack. love the Valentine's Day episode when Ray made the joke about putting quote I want to fuck you in a card. It brought me back to high school when a girl I knew actually gave me a card that said something along that line. Oh, baby. Here's the story of a lovely lady. So I grew up very sheltered and Christian, but started to open up more my junior and senior year of high school due to my friend group. Well, one of those friends... The Thrashers. <laughs> yes. Let's call her Trisha, the Thrasher, oh, yeah. Trisha was Thrasher. a huge social butterfly. I had the biggest crush on Trisha. She was cool, nerdy, smart, but she intimidated me at the same time because of those things and because she had dated a few guys. Because of them things, you said? Yep. He does, she he, had those he, things? He does say those things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very uh, intimidating <laughs> things. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway, she things. made it clear that she liked me, but my sheltered Christian boy brain couldn't get past the intimidation part of knowing she'd been with other guys, and I never made my move. Oh, when... If, if I... Oh, if I had... So the, worst, the worst thing religion has ever done. I don't know about that, but if I had one dollar for every joke? time, like, I could look back now as an adult. We've talked about this before. I could look back now as an adult in a situation where a girl was showing genuine interest and I could be like, hey, idiot. Like, stop worrying about this. It's, yeah. it's so funny because I feel like there's something not cool about it, but I would love to do a podcast episode where all we talk about is missed opportunities like that. <laughs> I would love that. It would be so fun. The heaviest bleeped episode <laughs> yes. of, in history. Yes. She had those bleeps. <laughs> oh, no, I was just thinking, oh, and then there was bleep, yeah. and then bleep, oh, yeah, and then yeah. bleep of her. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, Christmas senior year comes around, and she gives me a card. In the card, she Christmas tells me... Christmas senior year. Paint yep. that picture. In the card, she tells me that the year is almost over, and I need to start working on our deal. Our deal was that if I didn't get laid by senior banquet at the end of the year, she would take my virginity herself. Fun fact, I didn't get laid before senior banquet, and I was too much of a coward to ever ask her out. I gotta go. I can't deal with it. I gotta leave. I, I, of course, understand how... how uh, You said Jack? Yes. Jack is feeling here. Of course. If some wonderful young lady yep. uh, had fucking thrown down the gauntlet at me and yep. said, hey, here's what it is, yep. I would be like, she's kidding. Yep. It's a joke. It's a joke. She's, she's, and I can't make that... I can't take it seriously. Yeah. That would ruin any she's, chance I have to in, not do anything later. She's in cahoots with Chuck. They're going to film this. They're going to show it at Senior Banquet. <laughs> By the way, senior banquet. What the hell? What are we doing? Um, you I would, kill a goat at this thing? It sucks because I think I would do the same <sighs> thing if I was a child. If I was like a 17-year-old or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think I'd feel the same way that you're talking about. And now it's just like as soon as you make that deal, you know she's she's interested. And that's when you gotta move forward. I would not wait. Even now I'd be like, I don't know if I don't know about that. I could see an I could see a version where she brings up like this kind of deal, but it's it is a joke. Okay. Uh, I don't. I, do you guys do you guys want to hear this? Card? Yeah, because he, he has a photo okay, okay. photo of the R- card real quick. Itself. In my experience, mm-hmm. if someone whenever I've made my virginity pass, <laughs> in my experience, <laughs> all, well, in my experience, <laughs> if someone makes like a joke like that, I have not seen it not come to some kind of fruition. That's all I'm going to say. Oh God, dear Jack. Yeah, the year is soon to be over. And you really must start working on our deal, in quotes. She's writing like Brad's therapist. Hold on, should we have like Christmas music under this? Because it's a Christmas card, right? It is. Very it bright is. and cheery, Craig. <laughs> but anywho... Can you make your voice sound like the narrator from Christmas Story? No. <laughs> but anywho... But anywho... You're a quirky nerd whom I love, ha ha. You're a great guy, and you're perfect the way you are, so don't ever let anyone tell you different. I hope you have a great Christmas. And then it's just a Merry she's, Christmas. She's so down, it's crazy. She is so down, it's crazy. I can see a version, and Jack, I'm not saying this is who you were, but I know people from my high school experience that were... 
uh, very, I guess in today's terms, like a, I hate this, like a beta e kind of thing. Very, very extremely like sheltered, awkward, uncomfortable, right? And yeah. Again, guys Jack, like that are the weirdest. No, no, I, Jack, I'm not saying that was you. Brad, I'm not saying that was you either. Oh, it is me. Uh, currently. Yeah, we'll that's what you future. were aspiring yes. to be. Uh, someday, uh, <laughs> someday I hope to reach the level. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but there were these kids that were extremely sheltered that did not... They didn't date anybody. They didn't yeah. do anything like that. And it they, they hung out with their own little circle and people knew that. And there were people that were nice and encouraging to them, but in a way that was safe and not, not something that they were going to follow through. Does that make yeah. sense? Uh, uh, you, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, like the, it's like the nice popular girl saying to that table of kids that are like the geeks or whatever and saying to one of the kids like, oh no, you're cute, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's so innocent. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's it's tough. It, it does, is it, tough. I'm it, not saying that that was the situation right. with Jack yeah, at all. I agree. I agree with you that that exists. This seems very different to me because A, making a deal that specific in the first place is already pretty specific. Yeah. Well, I need then, to see the contract. Well, right. then also she, she's the one that brings it up later. Yeah. We got to start working sure. on it. That's a but lot. there's language within it that does feel more like encouraging. Yep. Right. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Well, you know, what, stuff what is like the that. first couple lines? Read it one more time. Sorry. Sure. I like how we're really oh, getting I'm into it. this. Oh, if I'm Jack right now, I'm like, oh, this is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> the, this year is soon to be over, and you really must start working on our deal. But anywho, you're a quirky that, nerd. Start working on our deal. Like you need to go get laid. Yes. But anywho, you're a quirky nerd whom I love. Ha ha. You're a great guy and you're perfect the way you are. So Jeez. don't ever let anyone tell you different. I hope you have a great Christmas. She's interested. There's only one way to know. There's only one way to know. We finally used that time machine we've been talking about. <laughs> yep. And these three grown adult men <laughs> show up at this Christmas banquet yep. for high school children <laughs> and go, where's that girl that's funny, smart with the huge tits? <laughs> Where is she? Where is she? Does you. she have a name in this story? <laughs> wait, wait, where's uh, Chuck? It's just Trisha. <laughs> Trisha, that's right, Trisha. We're looking for Trisha with the tits. Has anyone seen Trisha with the tits? And everybody's like, mm. we and wait, just point. <laughs> or we, before we go, we're like, people are going to think we, we stick out. They're going to notice, right? And Brad's like, that guy is covered. And then we just have three Santa hats. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here we go. I, I don't keep spreadsheets like Brad, but I do keep letters and cards from people who were slash are important to me. Trisha and I are still friends to this day. Oh, that's great. But I don't talk to her as much since I moved across the country. I hope you have. A, I hope you all had a wonderful Valentine's Day. I love the show and I love being one of the fun. That guys. is wonderful. So let me guess. So thank in other you, words, thank you, Jack. Sincerely, that's that's really great. So yeah. he didn't get laid by the time. Right. And then he kind of never talked to her about it. Uh, they would I don't not. Know. I, you know what? I think this podcast is going to bring them together. Maybe they're both single. Maybe this is a meet cute. Can we for talk them. to Trish? Mm. Yeah. Can we talk to Trish? Yeah. Huh. Ah, oh, man. I hope, I, you know, I, I, I don't know what Jack's situation is right now. Mm. Hope he's happy. Yeah. Um, Me too. But the, the, like, that missed opportunity probably keeps him awake. Mm. Uh, one night in seven. It should. Yeah. But I see, I, maybe it's the insecurity in me at that time in my life where I am like, I don't know if she meant that. You know what I mean? I, I get think, it. I think I that get it. my whole philosophy with dating and blah, 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 whatever, uh, has changed so much since I was like in high school. No, you said, you've told me your philosophy on dating. And I remember it very clearly. Mm -hmm. You said, when it comes to dating, I, Chuck Staten, firmly believe <laughs> it is easier to beg forgiveness than ask permission. <laughs> And that's insane. No, 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 please go ahead. I just think that um, I have a very different mm, way of, of, of behaving in terms of engaging people with this kind of stuff yeah, or talking yeah. to people. And I I feel like now I'm very... If, if I was in the similar situation, like now with my knowledge, I think I would just kind of be like, so like, uh, what's up with this deal? Are we, are we being... <coughs> yeah. Excuse me. Bless you. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. I hear you. <coughs> oh, my God. This I am allergic to this room. It is genuine. You guys don't believe me? I'm, I swear. I, I've never doubted you. All right. Thank you. I just, I, I don't know a solution. I think I would say. Lawsuits. I think oh. I would say, so this this deal, are we, are we being serious? What's going on But here? Chuck. And then you just let it that happen. That comes with life now. Like you said, if I knew now, yeah. right? Or knew then. And I think the biggest piece of knowledge that we have as adults is how 
little those things truly mattered at the time. Can I tell? But at that time, those things mattered absolutely the most. Well, Can I tell you a thing that scarred me. Sure. Um, I had a crush on a girl in college, and so this is I'm 19 at the time, and I think she was about to turn 20. And I was hanging out with her like the night before her birthday. So it's 1159 or whatever. Yeah. Mm. She turns 20 and, and she's like, oh, I feel like I need to do something like impulsive. And it's it's her, her friend who is a cheerleader and me. Uh-huh. And again, I have, a, I have a crush on uh, girl A here. And she's like, I need to do something impulsive. Like I kiss somebody. And, you know, they both turn and look at me <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, okay. And I leaned in and she's like, not on the lips. Ugh. I almost took my own life in that. Yeah, moment. yeah. Man. Oh, truly. Like, like yeah. I, I felt so bad yeah, about myself. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh my god, I've been there. Oh. Yeah, I would, I would feel so bad. Yeah, too. I still feel, do. Still I, do. Feel I wish for I you. hadn't I thought of it. Right now. Ruined my day. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going home. But in that moment, of course, it's the biggest thing and horrible. And now you yeah. can look back, and it is, it, it's an anecdote, right? Yeah, and it, yeah. it did she, not. She and I are pals. Ruin your life? No, it did not. But well, it can feel like it ruins your life in the moment, yeah. for sure. I'll, I, I will say. So back then, when I was like a teenager in college, whatever. Yeah. I feel like there was a lot of times. I'm sure we're, we can all kind of, uh, you know bond over this and, and feel similar where there was someone you liked mm-hmm. you're in a situation where wow this seems like a time where maybe something could happen maybe i could kiss this person maybe things are going to go forward it could even be as small as like holding someone's hand whatever it is yeah. Beatles. and at the time <laughs> i felt paralyzed by fear of rejection uh-huh. fear of offending somebody fear yeah. of whatever and so i'd say most of the time in those situations when i was young I would just err on the side of caution yep. and not do anything. Mm-hmm. And now, and I, I bring this up because it was so specifically similar, I felt so similar um, recently with the cruise when I was interested in this, in, in Natalie, who I'm now dating, where I was like, we've been getting along really well. She's so pretty. She's so sweet. She's so kind. And we were just kind of hanging out last night of the cruise. Uh, it's... 12 30 at night we're all gonna go to bed pretty soon and i'm like this is kind of the last point in time and i felt the exact same feeling where i'm like mm. what are you gonna do <clears throat> and i kind of did this thing where i didn't really have to commit to either completely not doing anything yeah or making a move and i i was like i just thought of it and i was like i'm gonna try this and i leaned over to her and i said I think I shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me, I think I shit my pants. So does seasickness make you shit your pants? <laughs> I got to go back to my cabin and take these things off. You want to come? <laughs> because, I leaned, because I need someone to wipe around down there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I leaned over to her and I went, um, I'm like, has it been clear that I'm hitting on you? Hmm. And she was like, yeah, I think so. And I was like, all right, good. And like, I could read her response yeah. without putting her in a position where I'm trying to make out with her yeah, yeah. and she doesn't want to. I, yeah. I, if, if she, if she had, she could have responded in a way that told me she wasn't interested Yeah, or in a way that told me she was, but here's the rub in that situation. If she's not interested. Yeah. The next day you go your separate ways. You never see her again in situations like with Jack mm, is a little bit more Brad's on the line socially. That's a friend. They're in a friend group yep. in school. They see each other every fucking day. Yep. You know what I mean? So yeah. getting that getting that decline, yeah. right, is much harder to deal with at that point. Yeah, I guess so. You know? I, I think in the uh in the like if I were on the cruise, it's the last night, whatever, and like, oh, should I make a move? I think the move I make is I tie myself to the anchor and jump overboard. <laughs> <laughs> it's just easier. Would you ever say anything like that to someone? Uh probably. You would I, I probably have. Like, is it clear I'm hitting on you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you, honestly, you said it to that blind woman because it's yeah. <laughs> to, to me because you kept winking. Yeah. To me, it's like a little cheat because it's really inoffensive. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And you really do get your answer. Yeah. yeah. And then you let things play. Yeah. Yeah. If if she was like, no, I would be like, I gotta go, and that would be it. Yeah. You know. I don't know. But yeah, and uh, uh, I guess, I guess the moral here is just like I think we can all uh, empathize oh, deeply yeah. with these ideas of. Uh, should I have done this or should I have said that, you know? Yes. And it is tough because there are versions of this where you have the regret of not doing anything. For sure. Like Jack is yep. feeling. Uh, you have the regret of making a move yep. like Brad had in his college moment there. Yep. And then I, I have regrets of like, uh, you know, missing out on that, very similar, uh, similar to Jack. I also have moments where like I 
t- I managed to like screw myself out of the situation yep. where things were so clear and obvious and then go the other direction right? because I couldn't shut up. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't want to get too into the detail of it, but there because was... Because you love Paranormal Activity. Of course. Yes. No. Is that what it was? No, no. What movie was it? What? There, there was, was a, a movie yeah, where the... you were with, at, with a girl oh, in your dorm Oh, yeah, that's right. That was uh, Saw, the first yeah. Saw this movie. This was your I wouldn't Dark shut Crystal. Up about the turn. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there was a different situation in college where there was a girl who... It was very clear. Like, the entire summer... We talked on the phone like yeah. late at night. She was working at a, uh, uh, I think like a, it's like a, a retreat place. Okay. She was working there for the summer. I was stuck at home. It was, I think it was the last summer I stay. I went back home. Right. Mm. We talked on the phone the whole time. It was very obvious where things were leaded, yep. uh, leading. I show up back at school. She's. We're talking about when she's going to be there. She's like, I'm here. I'm unpacking. Come on over to my dorm room. All of my friends are like, this is obviously happening. Yep. All this stuff happens. I don't know how much I want to get into this. Yay, okay. say it. So I'll say, I'll say one, too, if you want. So I go to her room. It's her and her roommate. And I'm friends with both of them. Um, and it's very clear. Even the roommate knows what's going yeah. on. And we're just chatting. We're just talking. Everything's fine. And that's when I found out uh, through our conversation, we were talking about, of course, sex, right? Mm. Sex comes up, partners, things you've done when you lost your virginity, all those things are coming out. And she had said she lost her virginity at, uh, I want to say it was like 17 or 18. What? She lost her virginity at a Kid Rock concert. <laughs> and I was like, I can't. I'm out of here. Well, ba with a ba. I was about to do yeah. that. So, uh, <laughs> so she's like 17 or 18. And she was talking about like her boy, her first boyfriend and how they were sexually active and at 16. And I was and I we're we're just talking and yeah. I I Columboed. Right. And I was like, well, hang on a second. Just one more thing. Yeah, just, I just I just noticed that you said uh, you said you you lost your virginity when you were seventeen and a half, but uh, just a moment ago, yep, you uh, said you were having sex with your boyfriend at the time. <laughs> and she, and at she's 16. like, she's like, that voice is turning me on so much. <laughs> oh, my Columba! I, lo- I love. <laughs> well, let Peter, me go get a cigar. I love Peter Falk. And I'll fuck my eye up, yep, but good. Yep. Uh, and she's like, no, what happened is I was in a uh, religious place. I was mm. raised religiously. And so I didn't want to lose my virginity. Yep. And so what we did was to other way. Yep. The, yep. the old... Purity culture, folks. God God bless him. The old back door mm, situation. I don't know that he does. <laughs> and here's, here's the problem. Everything was so clear. Yeah. There might as well have been a man with two flashlight batons <laughs> waving me in yeah. like an airplane. No, I, yeah. Everything was good to go. Yeah. And what I should have said in that situation was, makes total sense. Yep. Say, Smart. Yep. Or, good or, for you. Or, you. or you could have said, hey, how about not losing your virginity in about five <laughs> years? Yeah, yeah. And then going, <laughs> nudging her, <laughs> looking at the roommate. You know what I'm talking about. Leave yeah, room right. for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So I just should have nope. shut my mouth and been like, this makes sense to me. Yeah. Even though internally I'm like, this makes no sense to me. Uh, yeah. And so instead I said, well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, and I started to argue with her about the detail of Perfect. this. Yep. And I used the analogy. I can't believe this happened. Oh, God. I used the analogy. I know this story so well. In the moment. Because my point was, yep. if you're going to try and like save something like virginity my point was like there are people that have lost their virginity that have never done that yep right yeah and this is a different situation so what i said was it's like if you had a bottle of snapple Mm because i think i had like a snapple iced tea like i was drinking i was like and you want to maintain that tamper lid you don't want it to pop when yep. you push on it. So instead, what you did was smashed the bottom of the bottle <laughs> and and to get in there. And no matter what you, with what way you look at it, that tea is gone. <laughs> <laughs> and um, 
It, it nothing happened. Yeah. Oh, really? Um, I think hanging out stopped right away after yeah. that. Uh, and then I went to my room and was totally oblivious. Like la la la. Uh. Tomorrow we're going to continue down this journey of yeah. becoming lovers, right? <laughs> And she didn't talk to me for yeah. like two weeks. She was so angry. I really hurt her feelings with that. Yeah. And I apologized profusely and explained everything. We ended things with like totally good terms. We are friends. Yeah. You know, I think we still connect on Facebook and stuff like that. I wish her nothing but the best. Uh, she's a great person. Oh, she's definitely a fun bear. Um, yeah, probably not. And no. uh, <laughs> But I will never forget that probably because not. it was genuinely like... It was so dumb. It was so dumb, but I also <clears throat> are if right. You're a fun bear, I apologize, but I still believe what I say. <laughs> I, I will. I will say this. I tend to agree with you, mm. but in my in my heart of hearts, the devil's advocate inside. Yeah, he is saying to me, it's pretty normal to grow up and be a virgin until you lose your virginity. That's and, how it happens with everybody. Yeah. And on the way, give a few BJ's. Oh yeah, that's and but that's that's different. I don't know if it's different. Isn't it sodomy? Yeah, like like legally as defined by Texas. I mean, I mean, yes. it's, it's the same as you got a hole and I'm putting a thing in it. I, yeah, but I, mm. I think the diseases are different. Well, I, they're not that not that different. I've got them all. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think I think in that situation, like uh, you know, commonly, hey, hey I'm, I'm gonna, with you. I'm yeah, with you. I'm going to okay. say the common the, the common ground thing here is like a, a bajibber that you're talking about is a lot of times on the road to <laughs> yeah. traditional yeah. penetrative sex, right? Yeah. The other part that we were just discussing, yep. the the saving yourself. The road less traveled. The road less traveled, <laughs> by definition. <laughs> less traveled. Yeah. That was there some are, people I know. Yeah. There, are, there are many people that have never ventured into that territory. Yeah. You know, that's what I, I think that's what I'm t- I, was, yeah. I was getting at in that moment. Does yeah. that make sense? I do. And it is... Deeply like a religious weird back I, I agree. Yeah. back channel to yeah, back door, follow no. your 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 belief structure yeah. there. You know? I, I'm pretty much with you, but yeah. there but I feel like there is an argument on the other side that if you think that blowjobs are not losing your virginity, then how can you say that? Right. I think that there's an argument to be yeah, made. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I understand. I it it's akin to had I met somebody and things were going well and I found out that uh, you know they're Mormon and they they're a soaker. Yeah. yeah. They soak. Yeah. yeah. I would and still like, be like mm. Best sex. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would talk myself out of a good soaking. Yeah. Uh, I will say one of my favorite things about me and Ray, where we truly had a misunderstanding. It wasn't an art. This is not like a polite way to say argument. This is a true misunderstanding. This is when I wanted to save my virginity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, want, and he yeah. wanted to soak you. Yeah. My, yeah. My, my, one of my favorite things about our relationship, and it was such he a He calls mis- himself the super soaker. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Average at best. Yeah. Not, there's nothing <laughs> super about it. Well, he pumps too hard because he thinks it's going to be a bigger stream, you know? <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> so... And it was truly, truly a misunderstanding. It's so fucking funny. I don't remember this or where you're going. As with soon it. as I start saying it, you'll be like, "Oh my yeah. god!" One t- we so we were talking on the phone uh, late at night, uh-huh. and uh, one time, just like me and that girl I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, one time, I was just sitting there and talking to Ray on the phone, and he's like, "What? What was that?" And I'm like, what? "Oh yeah, <laughs> this is the best." And I go, "What was what?" And he's like, "Oh my god, are you serious?" And I'm like, "What?" And he hung up on me. And I called him back and he's like, no, no, not playing this game. And he hung up. And I know this is going to sound crazy. I was like, I don't know what this guy is talking about. He's crazy. And I just went along my time. Like months went by from that day. And we never figured out what was, I never figured it out. And then one day we're on the phone again. And he goes, oh, no, no, not putting up with this. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he goes, I know what you're doing right now. He's like, you're getting a blowjob while you're on the phone with me. And I was like, I'm not. I'm not. And I didn't know how to prove it. I was like, hey, watch, watch, hello. You take a picture of an empty room. <laughs> There's nobody here. And he, and then, and, and I was like, I can't believe you said that. And what happened was, you know how sometimes I have like a tick where I'll go wow. like that? Yeah. When he heard that, to him that sounded like a blowjob. <laughs> well, you were doing you were doing it like multiple times. <laughs> yeah. And through the phone and like distortion of yeah. that, it sounded like that. Yeah. And 
to be fair, I'll, I'll, often when we talk on the phone, you're playing uh, like an old video game. Sure, yeah. sure, yeah. And you were playing a video game, <laughs> so, like, so you were distracted a little bit, right? Uh, and you were like, uh huh, what? Like you were doing a little bit of that. <laughs> yeah. And in my head, you were that that you're like you were also i think you were talking about somebody you were hanging out with earlier or yeah. something like that or they just left or whatever so it so it, it crept up because he's like oh he's a little distracted and then he hears yeah and i hadn't connected that you <laughs> and, did that and, noise and at he, that time and, and then he hears woohoo and like what well, really <laughs> like right. chuck beat star star road world five yeah. Yeah, yeah, but i just yeah. hear oh i'm so close yeah. you know what i mean like stuff like that finally finally yeah. you know but, what i mean but it was so funny because it was like an unsolved mystery for, for months yeah because i kept going what are you doing and you're like what nothing nothing yeah but the tone in which you were saying it was like you were hiding something yeah. right and because you didn't know what i was getting at i didn't know what you were getting at <laughs> so we're both getting like gigglier yeah and i'm like i know what you're doing you know and i'm like i don't want to be a so i don't want to be involved in this i don't want to be on the phone for this now that you're saying this i think it was it was making me laugh it's funny it is it very is. funny yeah so if i would think of course you're laughing because you're like you're doing this thing I right he was doing a bit yeah so it's like if all of a sudden you're talking to your friend on the phone and they start going like oh no <laughs> <laughs> what do you do to me oh no no if i hear if i hear if i'm on the phone and i hear somebody else go oh no you're not doing this to me then i know it's brad getting a blowjob <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Not he, this time. What is the, one of the things. Suck me once. Shame on you. <laughs> and he was saying stuff like, "I don't want to be involved in this." Yeah. Like, I yeah. don't want to do. Started <laughs> making me laugh, and I'm just like, "What do you mean?" And he goes, yeah. "What are you doing right now?" And I'm like, "Nothing." But I'm like saying it through laughing. Yeah, but if you had said, "I'm playing a video game," and sometimes they make weird squishy noises. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, fine. Yeah. But it just because if I'm honest, as a younger man, I did take a phone call. Oh yeah, when I, that was going on, I do it to Brad all the time. What? <laughs> you I, just admitted that you do it. <laughs> whenever I call you for no reason, I'm just but I, like, <laughs> whenever you know, whenever you pick up the phone and you just hear like, <clears throat> so what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Chuck's like, hey, I, I'm, I'm playing this game. I thought you could cheer me on. Could you count down from 10? <laughs> I'm like, hey, buddy, you can do it. I know you can do it. Yeah. I've seen you do it. <laughs> anyway, I'm walking wow, to your house sounded... right now. You're like, no, come over. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that sounded like a really hard level. <laughs> but no, that I, yeah, that was a very funny miscommunication. <laughs> that was a very funny miscommunication. Well, I think the funniest thing about it was I literally had no idea what you were referring to. Yeah. So I couldn't even rebut. I, I, I right. didn't know what he meant. You but know? I, I, like, <laughs> I think I've also been lightly scarred socially from this because I had a friend in high school yeah. that was like so sexually on front street mm -hmm. all the time that it got, like it genuinely was like, I had to say to him like, don't call me when you're doing stuff. Yeah. Oh, wow. You, know? and, you had someone that would actually do that? Yeah. And uh, and like I remember there was, I think I had a joke for, forever ago because this happened. Like I remember calling him one time and he picks up the phone and goes, yeah, I'm just jerking off. What's going on? And I'm like, D let it go no. to voicemail. Yeah, like, don't yeah, do that. And course. so when I heard that, it was just in my head and I'm like, I think, I think he's getting a bajipper, yeah, you know? Yeah. But I like how you're like, oh, no, I would never. And then immediately you're like, yeah, I do it with Brad. <laughs> no, I, that, that was for the yeah. podcast. Yeah. I don't really do it. Yeah. yeah. But it, was, it is funny. I mean, that is a very funny miscommunication. Yeah. Now when I have to answer the phone during like sex stuff, uh -huh. I pause. I say, hold on. I mean, maybe yeah. don't answer, answer the, the phone. phone. Well, but... if it's an important call. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, but it's, you can't it's me be call. looking at it. Hey, <laughs> hey, did you see the new Deadpool trailer came out? Chuck's like, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go. <laughs> Double pause. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the idea of you. So does that mean you have your phone in a visible place? Well, it would have to be... Like, is it like when else, you do the podcast and else, it's propped to look at it? How else is he going to look well, at pictures of himself? <laughs> <laughs> the podcast one, I have the timer. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it... No, I, I think I probably... My phone is usually on, like, it's just on vibrate, and yeah. I usually wouldn't hear it if I was, like, doing something. And you like to incorporate it in a fun way. But it would have to be, like, literally would have to be, I glance over something during something, and I see a phone call happening. Yeah. That I know is coming and is important, and it's it, from it, the president. In other like, words, I gotta go. I he can't might have thyroid cancer. I yeah. can't remember the last time that happened. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, I can see myself saying, "Hold on, hold on." I would never, I, I would never continue to have sex and answer the phone at the same time. 
No, no, no. You know? I think that's a young man's game. Yeah, I think so. I've done it. Yeah. But I was a young man. And you were like being silly. It's cheeky. It's cheeky. <laughs> your it's Honor. Simply, by the way. Your Honor, it is simply cheeky. I did something that was fucked up recently. I can't remember what it was, but I remember keep thinking in my head. I thought it was, oh, I know what it was. I'm not going to talk about it on the podcast. Okay. No way. No how. This is all internal monologue. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Whatever, swipe the state clean. But yeah. I remember I kept thinking to myself, I was being cheeky. I was being cheeky. And cheeky is such a funny, weird adjective yeah. to describe oh, anything, man. especially yeah. in defense of what sure. you did. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, we have a serious email. Oh, wow. I think we have time for that one. Yes. And I just want to, man, I can't believe we've done so many episodes of this podcast, probably when this comes out, almost 100. Yes. Uh, or maybe just yeah. past. Yeah, Who we're knows? close, yeah. Uh, and it's taken that long to tell that snapple analogy story like that's that's yep. genuinely where my head was i yeah. was like i lawyered myself out of oh college sex when i was in college it and i'm sure ray was the same thing me and ray are more similar than you think when we were in college i think you guys are virtually the same we're, we're all the same he, he would like to he's gonna push back fuck but it's not true death, <laughs> fuck you to death in college i can tell we had the same thing in terms of engaging in arguments for fun in social settings uh this is this is that for sure i don't know i for me that was a continuation of like the flirt and i was just so stupid uh because it genuinely did i i i didn't really engage in argument for fun yeah um this situation was definitely like it hit me and i was like and i was in college it was the first time i had ever heard somebody yeah. truly do that yeah and i was so baffled by the thought process of it yeah i would do i couldn't thing. think consciously hey maybe don't challenge her thoughts on that yeah because nothing good can come from right. that yes exactly and you're also in this moment that has taken i don't know like it wasn't like i was trying to get there but it was something that started the previous semester oh yeah. for sure went yeah through the entire summer just and like, now it's it, like here we are it's a girl you like and, and yeah. who, who knows what's gonna happen yeah right and, who and knows what could have happened sliding you're, doors you're tanking yep. it i could be having anal sex with a completely different woman right now <laughs> my son wouldn't exist and colin brad he would have just ended up in brad someone's hears, butt <laughs> brad just hears, oh that was <laughs> That was, too that was much. awful. That okay. was too much. Let me get to the next email. Craig, want, use your own discretion to keep in or cut out whatever you want. <laughs> Vote for keep. Vote for keep. Uh, this is from... Oh, real quick. Sorry. Last sorry. I, I'm so sorry. It's okay. If you, a uh, uh, viewer listener, are someone that took the same route... Please write in. Genuinely, please write in. We are not going to ridicule. You can be anonymous, whatever. I want to know the thought process, where you heard about it, and why you decided to do it. And like I said, I can be convinced. Okay. Free samples. Purity culture. <laughs> not <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> the idea of you saying not free samples. This email's from February 16th. It's from a gentleman that I'll, I won't name. Uh, hey, guys. Ray recently brought up the fact that he doesn't drink at his shows, and it stuck with me. In short, I'm someone who should not indulge in alcohol. Hmm. I used to drink often, and now when I get an opportunity, I tend to binge. Hmm. For example, I might buy five beers during a two-hour comedy show and down a cocktail in the parking lot before... Covering eyes emoji. Yeah. Going forward, I'm avoiding alcohol. I'm performing my first comedy set for a class I took next month, and I'm staying sober for that and the shows I, I attend leading up to it, including the Winter Thunderland show. Anyways, Ray didn't give the impression that he had a problem with alcohol or anything, but his words triggered a moment of clarity for me that I wanted to thank him for. Oh, thank mm. you. Sincerely. I love that, that that could be something that happened. Thank you. Um... P.S. Still embarrassed about some of the emails I sent in the past and literally cringe when I think about them. I hope something like this brings more value than me trying to be funny and disrespectful. The three of you inspire it's me fine. more yeah. than I can squeeze into any email. Peace and love. Uh, nothing, nothing to cringe about, my friend. No, no, Nothing no. to cringe about with this guy. And I'll say this. I, I don't think we've gotten an email that I thought was like weird or anything like that. Everything's I mean, great. Lee's recipe book. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> That's just for you, buddy. Uh, no, I, uh, uh, yeah, so to be clear, I had a very similar uh, thing with drinking um, as the person that wrote in. I was not an alcoholic, um, but I would get to a place where it was like, I would have like two drinks and be like, I feel great. I want to keep feeling great tonight. And then I would just drink, 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 drink. And so that's 
uh, that's where I was. I was never, you know, like I said, I'm not, not an alcoholic or anything like that, but I would go down that path. And as I started doing stand up more and took it more seriously, I realized very quickly, oh, like this is a very easy place to drink too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember doing a show in Bangor, Maine, back when it was. Uh, I was just starting to do stand up and I was still doing stuff with the acoustic comedy duo thing, yep. Travesty and Training. Yes. We did a show at a bar. It was like a big show. It was like a big deal for us at the time. And it was like my first real stand up performance outside of just the the band. Yep. And we celebrated by closing that place down. Yeah. And it was a silly night. Young and, man's game. Yeah. And the bar, uh, it was called Gemini. It's gone now. Okay. Uh, they did have a really great performance space. It was owned by two twin boy men. Makes sense. Twin With Gemini, guys, Gemini, yep, yep. right? Uh, and it, like, we shut the place down. I performed next door. There was a crab owner. Oh, uh, yeah. It was not a po- not a popular bar. No. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so we we did that, and it got sloppy and crazy. Yep. And the night was. It was a. It was one of those nights where like people were taking pictures and stuff, and then later you're like, I got to delete all of these pictures. Yeah. It was yeah. that kind of night. Yeah. Um. And what I didn't realize was they were still running a tab for all of us. Woo. Right. So I got a bill that was like three times what I got paid for the oh. night. And I was like, yeah, whatever, you know, I fine. Know. But it that I think that moment stuck with me where I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah. I I don't. And also, the more seriously I took stand up, the more I wanted to be. Completely clear control. and in control when i yep. was on stage and just naturally over time there was never a moment where i went i'm not drinking anymore yeah yeah but it just went away yeah. and i stopped feeling like i wanted it and and things like that it's like you know it's the way you cut anything out of your life soda yeah. whatever yep. yeah but there's still times when i drink uh but i just don't overindulge yeah yeah um <clears throat> when we went to when we went to ireland mm-hmm. i had guinness yeah because yeah. it's genuinely delicious when you have it from ireland yeah uh like i had one just to say oh i've had one and then after that i was like this is fucking great yeah yeah you know and i but but i'm talking like i had a couple yeah Yeah. and we're good yeah uh if i you know i I yeah finn Finn drove you home yeah yeah all all over the road yeah (laughs) because he was hammered yes he was fucking drunk yeah uh, but I, and, and also kind of notoriously, I will drink the shit out of some champagne at a wedding. Yep. Uh, if it's open bar, give me that champagne. I'll take a bottle. Um, if you put me in first class in an airplane, I'm gonna drink all the white wine and champagne I can. Uh, but like, that's kind of where I cap out. You yeah. know what I mean? I, so I, I love that this was able to trigger this f- for this person because yeah. in comedy, it's too easy to get way into that shit. Yeah. I think for me, like, <clears throat> you know, performing in the band for years, and now we do our live shows, and we've, you know, done a bunch of live comedy stuff over the years, I've never really been pulled towards it because of the idea of just, like, not losing complete control. Yeah. So to me, I think I've had one drink before maybe 5% of live shows I've ever done, and that's basically it, right? Yeah. I, I can't really think of yeah. anything besides that. And, like, it's fine, it, it, you know. Sometimes I d- I do feel loosened up once I, once in a while, but like it's not really a necessity, and it's also something that I don't know. With alcohol, it always seemed like let's add planning to our night of fun. Yeah, yeah. It's like how are we gonna drink this, and then how long until you drink more? And it's it's, it's like if you're just gonna have one, why even do it in the first place? Why are you doing this? Are you gonna? Have, it's and it's like I don't need it. Whatever the fuck. Dude. I I could I, very easily see myself going back to like having one or two drinks. Yeah. But, you know, as a working comic, it's like, I'm always driving. I'm yeah, always dealing yeah. with this yeah. stuff. Uh, and the more comedy I've done, like, the more I've seen the negative effects of fucking alcohol yeah. and, like, drunks yes. and being annoying in a show yes. or being too into it mm-hmm. after a show being problematic. Yep. And then drunk drivers, I have zero patience for that. Yep. Uh, it's affected my life personally. Yeah. Um, I have cut people out of my life that get in a car drunk. Fuck you. I, yeah. I I can't stand it, but anyway, um, yeah, it, it it's a it's a really tricky one. Uh, I will say to the person that wrote in and is is deciding to cut out drinking because they're getting serious about stand up. I applaud it, but also you've replaced one problem with another. Yes, for sure, for sure. Yeah. They're both emotional addictions, and you're fucked. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, I yeah, it's a it, it is an interesting thing. Yeah, yeah. 
I think we could do one more short email, right? There is a short email. Let's do it. From a short person. Yeah. By, the, by the way, I don't touch the sauce. This will be the last one. Any kind of sauce. <laughs> by the way. Have, do you, do you, are you a, a... Brad said he doesn't touch the sauce, yeah, yeah. and that's exactly what he meant. That is yeah. very funny. Uh, but do you drink... Have you drank? No. Never. 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 Teetotaler. Teetotaler. Have wow. You had, uh, Prohibitionist. I mean, you don't care about things with cooking wine. You're not like a lunatic. Um, you have chicken marsala. Uh, with mushrooms? Too saucy and mushroomy. Yeah. Get the heck out of here. Plus, I'll, he already say, he loves his other thick water. In sixth grade, my English teacher, I, I just thought of this yesterday for the first time in 100 years. Sixth grade, my English teacher made like mincemeat pie because we had read about it in a story and nobody mm. knew what it was. And she's like, oh, it's, it's this, this. And I think wine or rum sherry. or something. Sherry. One, sherry. one of the ingredients was an alcohol. Yeah. And I wouldn't touch it because I was so scared. Yeah. Even though it burns off. Yep. Yeah. I didn't, probably just didn't, understand I didn't know a lot about chem. I, and in fact, yeah. I'm sure she, that she said no. It burns up in the cooking, and I was like, no, no. If, if you if you went to Ireland, like I just went to Ireland, yep. Would you have a pint of Guinness? No, no way. I went to Germany. I didn't touch any beer. Germany. I'm already married. Chuck gets married yep. tomorrow. I'm drinking water because they toast. finally figured out how to clone him. Yep. And- <laughs> <laughs> switch switch the Y to another X. Yeah. No, you know what? Switch it back. Yeah, switch it back. I like the way it looks. <laughs> I paid that wizard all that money. So yeah. uh you know, he's raising a glass. It's a glass of champagne. Are you drinking the champagne? No, I'm drinking water. Really? Yeah. Is it a is does it come from a religious background or does uh, it, it come it, from it, a physical it, background? It comes, I think phys- like uh, you know, family members the dealing with alcoholism. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and then also my <laughs> Uh, just as problematic, need yeah. to be in control of a situation. That's understandable. So, no, I, I, yeah. I fully respect your yeah, decision. No. I just wanted to know where it was coming from. Yeah, no, so many I'm people, not one of those people that questions it. I hate when that happens. They're like, I'll get you drunk. And I'm like, yeah. no, you won't. The amount of times friend. people go, can I buy you a drink after a comedy yep. show? Yep. Somebody's liked me. Yep. And I go, oh, I, I'm, I'm, I don't drink. It's okay. I have to hear all the stuff. I've just taken to saying, yeah, I was an alcoholic. Yeah. Just to just to like yeah. stop the questioning, you know. The easiest thing for me, because as Brad will know from our fifteen years or so of friendship, yep, I don't really drink very much. Nope. And uh, but, but when he f- does, watch out. No, yeah. But the fa- the fact that I do drink so occasionally gets me completely off the hook of any of the criticism that he gets. Yeah. Sure, yeah. And it's yeah. like it's like I'm never drunk, like never. Like mm-hmm. I- I'm not kidding. In the past fifteen years. Less than seven times, I'd say. Yeah, you know, that's weird. Mm-hmm. Seven women have gone to gone to, mm-hmm. just vanished mm-hmm. in uh, around the Warren area. I was being cheeky. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, the cheeky killer. Uh, this is from March of this year. Whoa! Sorry for the long email. Please read on the pod. After being recommended the podcast by Chuck, after connecting over his story via DMs, oh, this podcast sliding into those DMs. This podcast quickly became my favorite podcast over my previous TESD, and I'm a Patreon member over there. Wow! One of the reasons why I, why I immediately became a fan of the pod is that I am a full screen watcher when it comes to podcasts, as my OCD does not let me enjoy it if I'm not seeing or visualizing the person talking. So thank you. Wow. And also, sorry for some of the visuals that we've given you in this yeah, episode. Yeah, we're so ugly. Snapple bottles and things, you know? No, I'm talking about the oh. abstract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but of course, the main reason I am a fun bear is because you guys are so welcoming and loving towards your community, and I immediately felt welcomed and loved by all of you, especially Chuck. Oh, wow. wonderful. I love you guys so much, and I can't wait for what's oh, in store from we now. shit about. Yes. Uh, March 1st to the future, when, when this will air. Yeah. Uh, my guess is November 23rd. <laughs> I hope by now the fun bearable calendar exists. Love fun bear Jay. Wow. Thank you, Jay. It's very nice. Yeah. Really. One of the reasons that we wanted to film it is is to like is so you could have those visualizations and so people could see yeah. kind of what we're working with. Which is yeah. What Which we're is weird because I think a lot of it does come down to like if you were a, a, a listener only. Yeah. For ninety episodes. Yeah. And then on the ninety first, you you tuned in for a visual. Yeah. I think a lot of it would just be like, oh yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. like uh, that makes sense no, Brad, entirely. Oh, Brad, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Brad's balder than I thought he was. I think the weirdest part would be that they would finally see that fourth person that sits in this chair next to me. Yeah, the very every person. episode, Craig. but doesn't say anything. Yeah, yeah. Craig. It's Craig. Yeah. yeah, we cut his mic after the first episode. He said a few things that were a little off. Yes, 
I love, no, I love doing these episodes. I love doing the the, the stuff side, like this. Yeah. Like it it brings out stuff that is fun to talk about on the podcast anyway. Yeah. That we don't. I've never jotted down in my phone. Make sure to tell that story about the time I absolutely screwed it up with oh, a yeah. Snapple analogy. Well, we kind of talk behind the scenes about the mail episodes, and we're like, oh, it's great because we get to talk to the people that listen to the show. Yeah. And they just basically give us lists of topics to jump into. Yeah, prompts. That, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Also. So the, the email after that was somebody saying, let Brad know, and it was a link to the Barb Wire Steelbook. <laughs> <laughs> let him know. Oh, yeah. Oh, please. He doesn't need another one. I uh, I mean, <laughs> he was, collects those it things. Was my, it was my letter writing campaign that got them to make it in the first place. So thank you, wow. Lars. <laughs> Why do you think he's always wearing long sleeves? Yes. All right. He's covering up those tattoos. <laughs> All right. So we're closing it up, baby. We're closing it up. Do thank we have you. a name for that? I know we crack the sack. But do we spackle the sackle? Pack the sack. Well, as they're thinking, I'll say if you want to write to us, funbearablepod at gmail.com or hit us up on socials at funbearablepod. Always happy to hear from the fun bears. We do sincerely love you pack. and appreciate I you. Just repack that sack. Yeah, pack. And or re rack. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, so <laughs> it's I'm gonna, not bad at all. I'm going to get us out of here for Ray Harrington. And Chuck Staten, I'm Brad Rohr saying thank you so much, and we're sorry for being fun bearable. I got repack, re rack, and whack. That's enough sack flack. Yakety yak. I, I rack. <laughs> <laughs> It's so yakety funny. yak Iraq. <laughs> like you're hoping for don't come back. Iraq. Iraq. Please let's not go back. <laughs> <laughs>